Hey guys, Northern Dice here, and I'm going to be unboxing my Kickstarter version of Cthulhu Death May Die and its associated stretch goals. I backed this, as usual, way long ago, forgot very much about it, very bad at keeping up with updates, but I remember why I backed this. It was the, the aesthetics. The Lovecraftian horror as a theme was an immediate no-brainer for me, but on top of that, it was the idea that minis travel across tiles, You've got a cooperative element to it. Your investigators taking on um, Lovecraftian horrors and Elder Gods. But also that um, the Elder Sign-esque art style that came alongside. I mean, as you can see on the unspeakable box, it just it screams mid-rampant 1920s. Everything is just so... Uh, it's hard to put into a word. I'm sure there's a word for it, the aesthetic. But I don't want to waste too much time because I'm really excited to get into this. So I'm going to put this to one side. And let's crack this big boy open. Okie dokie. So, straight off the bat, I've got to tell you, this box is heavy. Like, tremendously heavy. Uh, when I received this from the post office, because, you know, I'm glad that they didn't leave it outside my house. But anyway, um, when I picked this up from the post office, it said 7 kilos. Um, when you hold a massive box that's 7 kilos, you don't feel it's too much. But then when you've got something much more compact, and you know it's going along that way, it's weighty, weighty. So, let's hit this so you can see it. Rituals nearly complete. The unspeakable old ones will enter our world. You can't stop it. You have to destroy them. It is an... A cooperative board game for one to five players. Defeat Eldritch Hovers from out of time and space. You must embrace the madness and work together. I remember watching a short gameplay of this that you can defeat the Elder Gods once they are summoned. But, again, on a time limit and the usual ideal situation, stop them before they rock up. So, I'm, I know I'm skipping through quite a lot of the details on this, like the glazed look of the box. But I just really want to get inside. Ooh. There we go. Okie dokie. Pop that lid there. Have a look at this. What is this? These are... Ah, the sealed um, investigator packs. I'm going to crack these open because I want to. I'll tell you what, I know I'm going to cut that bit out, but that was awful to get inside of. Ah, okay. These... I don't even need to talk about the quality. These feel robust. You can see that. And they look awesome. There's so much going on on this card, but it seems to just flow against itself. So we'll compare two. We've got three different skill sets, which run alongside the madness track that you've got, which I believe is at the top here. And of course, if you become too insane, you did. You've got... Nice and simple explanation of what you need to do and what you can do. And you've got energy and health. And we flip it over and we get a tasty bit of lore. Got Rasputin, Russia's greatest love machine, and Lord Adam Benchley from Manchester, England. And you know he's from England because he's wearing tweed. That's all we do. Tweed and shotguns. Let's have a quick flick through the rest of these. Elizabeth. I like how they got a little bit of text next to him as well. Almost to give him that little bit of detail within him. Fatima. Ahmed. Borden. Ian. The Kid. That's horrifying. Morgan. Or Indiana Jones for that matter. Sister Beth. Cool. So if they're the characters and they're dead on top, I'm assuming the next thing's going to be punch boards. After a quick flick through the rule book, which doesn't feel as dense as I was anticipating. And actually, it's a lot emptier than I'd anticipate as well, just on visuals. Oh, look at that man! So here's your components. It's always really good when you get the components straight away. I know sometimes developers like to give a foreword or a bit of brief on the intro, but first thing I want to see is what's inside in the table of contents. And beautiful. Spot on. So then there's the overview of the episodes, because I know this works episodically in the respect that you can go for a story with this. You could just pick up an episode and take it on, but um, the beginning episodes will be the ones that will train you up to get ready to take on the trickier ones, where Cthulhu is knocking on the door ready. 
setup, turn sequence. Looks really easy access and the artwork is phenomenal. A death Investigator and a rule summary. Which is something I would be tempted to photocopy and pass out. Especially if I was teaching it to somebody, but there's always that risk that they'll just have too much of a good look and just get confused. Cthulhu Death May Die. Ooh, this is the Elder Gods um, track. Oh, is it a setup? So when you start an episode, you've got the episode, you've got the episode monsters, Elder One minions. It's all stuff you can get ready. Because I know that when you get to either this one or this one, the Elder God is going to be here. Punch boards. Pull this to one side. Okay. Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I can see somewhat of an insert here with a sleeve to holster it together. And some cards here. Come to me cards. These. Patient medical file, sanitarium. Are these the insanities you can get? So as you play the game, you get insanities, which can be positive and negative. Codependency, so you work better with a specific other player who probably will also have a no codependency trait. That's quite cool. Right. Oh, is this, is this double layered? Now, I was worried with these big games that you won't get an insert. Mansions of Madness, no insert. Had to go and get a foam one purchase as I'm not skilled enough to make my own. But this appears to be an insert. You can see that fellow underneath. Is this taped? It's taped. Give me a moo. Oh, God. Bloody cards. <laughs> okay, first thing. If sellotape is your go-to for sealing anything, I hate you. Sellotape is a beast to remove. But this insert is a beauty to behold. Look at this. These are your different sanity trackers. Let's just sneak one out. I know I'm overlooking the fact that there's some gorgeous minis there, but oh, bear with me. Small stuff, small steps. Just for a little marker. Attention to details, beautiful. It's that sort of thing that gives the game, from what I can see so far, an actual aesthetic that goes beyond the gameplay. Like you could pick that up and you would go, it's either something quite sunken and deep, or it's going to be something Cthulhu based. What's hiding under here? A lot of the same fella. What a nice man he looks like. And here is a card to give you a hint of where everything should sit. Now, you will have to bear with me because my terminology for a lot of these nasties isn't up to scratch to what it used to be. I believe it's Amigo. Probably not Amigo. But you know it's Cthulhu-esque when it's got the tentacles coming out the mouth. It's got the nastiness just writhing around it. What a beautiful man. Let's put him back. And solid, solid quality it feels. Solid quality. It doesn't actually seem to have warped whatsoever. Let's take this one out since he's on top. Let's have a look at this hideous fella. Beautiful. And the tooling on this is just stunning. It's not got the little um, caverns from almost like a, what are the sea creatures? Barnacles. Like barnacle molds upon them. Grim. Beyond grim. Which is exactly how this should be. And then in here, you see still a bit of tape on there. I hate tape. Are the character models. And here is the nun. With a dagger and a gun. And she's got her gigs on so she can see. Looks good. And that fits nicely back into its slot, does it? Is it supposed to? I'll double check against the film after. If I take Rasputin out. Here he is. Russia's greatest love machine. Again, it's the tooling. You can see the creases in his trousers. 
Very cool. Very impressed. Awesome. Let's put a lid on that in the literal sense. Oh, the dice, the dice, the dice, the dice, the dice. Come on, man. Give yourself some credit. Which are engraved. Sunken. Sunken dice. Tasty Elder Sign. Terror. Exclamation mark. Blank. And the green ones are identical, I believe, apart from colour, so... Unless, of course, they've got one or two differences. It could be a power level thing. I'm not sure, but I know that I am taking a very long time this unboxing in both the respect of me trying to unbox things and talking nonsense. Congratulations if you've made it this far. You've just seen me drop loads of stuff. And nothing has fallen out. Ooh, uh. Apart from this small, slight box. Ooh, uh. Let's try that again. Right, I'm assuming because of the density of everything that it is going to be very difficult to get those stretch goals in this box afterwards. So, I'm not going to try. But this is labelled as Cthulhu. Is this just the model of Cthulhu? Moment of truth. Star spawn cards, his little visages, people that follow him. And more cellar tape. But that's Cthulhu's backside and his little mate's backside. There they are. They look phenomenal. Unbelievable. I'm not going to get them out because I want to look at Hasta. Unpopular opinion, I prefer Hasta. And no doubt I shall be consumed in the night because of that. But so be it. All hail the Yellow King, son. I will get has to happen. You're gonna to have to bear with me a moment. Okay. Immediate everything. Specific punch boards to him. Minions of Hasta. And of course, Hasta card himself. When Hasta advances, you gain a yellow sign token. Summon one Hasta disciple to the nearest gate and one cultist to the other gates. Ooh, it's getting naughty. And there's the Hasta disciple cards, the actual enemies that will run alongside it. And of course, every good Hasta disciple always carries their trusty Hasta shotgun. I am going to get this bad boy out. Once I fought against the tape. Now that is not a mini. That is a mega. Look at that. Look at the detail. My God, it's just... <laughs> a writhing mess of tentacles. <laughs> and again, the tooling... On the cloth. Say what I always say. If I could paint, I would paint. And I would spend a lot of time painting this. Sadly, I can't paint. So I would probably end up just dipping it in Dulux Yellow and having it be. But that is insane quality. Stunning in the most grotesque fashion. Wonderful. Oh, and I got him back in the box in one try. Dreams do come true. I've just noticed there is an indent in the actual box, which means that there is space for those tokens that I will eventually punch, which I think is quite cool. Quite cool indeed. Can I get this back in the box in one try? The answer is no, I cannot get it put back in one try, but you know, I had a good crack. All right, I will very quickly get this one out, but I'm not going to unbox much of it. Because I do want to get onto the stretch goals. Again, three layers. One, two, three, four, five. Oh lord, what would those be? Is that a Sogoth? I'm assuming the fire vampires are in there as well. And these are the episodes. 
which I do want to have a quick pond of that. It's wonderful having a modular insert, but it's also the trick that you've got to try and get it back without feeling like you're going to rip through everything. Because even as I try and rip, get things, I feel this pushing, which isn't a problem, but it's just that conscious thought of, oh, my days one push too far and it's going to rip. Right, season one, episode one, seasons. We like seasons, which means there's more seasons to come. Must go through in there. What's worse than cultists? Cults have set the place on fire. Another night and another damn ritual to summon an elder god. Monsters, those two nasties. Contents of the box, discovery cards, lab. So at least it's played blind, which means it's an adventure every time. And when you've played them all, by the time you get to episode six, with the meat and bones on this game, it looks like you would then think, oh, well, I'll just do it again. I've just realised what I've done massively wrong. I could have put this back on those to get them back in. What a tool. Look at that. When you've got the sleeve on, it just goes in straight away. That complaint about modular cases there? Yeah, ignore that. They've nailed it. They've thought of everything. They have outsmarted me. And I want to go into the stretch goals. Now this was stretch goals, and I know that it was heavy on additions of characters, because if there's one thing anything Cthulhu Lovecraftian is heavy in, it's character. It's humans, because humans are flawed. Basically, we are broken from the moment we hit the planet Earth. Which is what makes this interesting. Because we are not made to do anything other than break more things, according to... Good old H.P. Lovecraft, despite the name, he wasn't a very loving man. And on top of that, there was his constant love of just talking about how badly flawed people were and that when we got our noses stuck into something, we couldn't help ourselves but keep looking. And inevitably, that's what sent us all insane. Enter the Elder Gods, of course. So, the unspeakable box, again, weighty, very weighty. Crack this bad by open. And it is a massive, massive plethora of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 characters, which means there'll be 18 new boards. Couple that with the 10, was there in the original? That's 28 characters to play as. Then we've got Yog sothoth Dagon, we've got Lost Episode 1, Lost Episode 2, and Lost Episode 3. Alongside all of these extra nasties. I was wrong, it wasn't Amigo earlier. There's the Migo. There's Wilbur Whitley, the half Elder God. Servants of the Deep and the Yithians. Beautiful looking things. Wasn't one of the Elder? Not the Elder. The monstrosities, the monsters, the horrors of Lovecraft once described as almost like a cucumber with arms. Wonderful. Right, you've seen these. I don't want to unpack these again because it is an absolute bin. However, there are a fair amount, and just from the robustness of feeling it through this, I can feel it is top-notch quality. What is this? Hello? Oh, these are character covers! Ooh! Ooh, get out the, get out the way, plastic stuff. Oh, I tell you what, look at that. That sets onto your thing and then you've got instant slots. Oh, that's novel. I mean, yeah, not everyone's going to want that, but God, blimey, that's, that's really cool. And of course, they're not all the same because it's a case. Because then you've got stuff to slide underneath as well. Oh, wow. It's very rare to say wow. That's a proper wow. Very, very well thought through. There you go. Your traditional empty cuboid to keep space in space. We've got Happy Birthday Lost Episode 3. Happy, uh, speak, Dan or Die. Bright Lights, Big Monsters. And here are the many, 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 many extra fellas you will get within oh, it's sellotapes and the sellotapes got caught on the box that's that's beautiful <laughs> a 
the many, 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 many different investigators. Because we humans cannot help but stick our nose in. This fellow looks like he's straight out of a bartending job in the Wild West who's just had far too much to drink. Love the pipe in his mouth. Must mean he's British again. Bloke in the suit, menacing smile. Definitely insane. But again, someone with a thirst for power. Someone else from the Wild West. Could easily be a mini from... Any Western game. Couldn't think of one then. Gonna leave that hanging. But again, quality. You can see his bootstraps, for goodness sake. Quality of that tooling. Top notch. Now give me a moment while I struggle. But I do. I'm just gonna put that there. Don't touch, don't look. Have a look at Digon. Who's the mini from the box? It just tells you what it is. Transformation cards, minion cards, Elder One stage cards. Ooh. And Mythos. Right, let's crack this open. Another cards that are on top. No punchables. Which I like. But also, does it mean that there's less depth with this than there is with, for example, Cthulhu or Hasta? Probably not. I'm not going to look at the details on that. I'd like it to be a surprise. Now the minions are Dagon. That's the Mythos cards. All right, give me a mo. Okay, let's crack it open. Let's get him. Oh, he's weighty. He's heavy. That is dense. They're gonna always, always looks incredibly confusing, but it's part of it. It's the um warped reality of the Elder Gods. Is that a mouth? Is it a tail? Is it a hand? Who knows? Is that the tail? Ooh. But again, it is that quality finish on it. They just look brilliant. There's like texture to it. There's been a lot of detail on this. Now, I always get paranoid about stretch goals because I always question whether they will be of the same quality, of less quality, or of greater quality which sometimes shows a developer's priorities in terms of what comes first. Do they feed into those who help fund the game or do they feed into those that did not and make it for the mass market? But these seem to be of similar, if not equal, quality. Let's sneak this back into this box. Oh, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied, I lied. There was punchables in three parts. One side, transform side. Dagon's is probably going to be centered entirely around the transformation of humans into beasties, but hey ho. You will find out when you play it yourself, and I will find out very soon, I hope. Boom, and I'll finish off by having a look at the box of Yog Sothoth. Yog Gates, Yog Sothoth, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Wilbur Wheatley, Waitley. Wilbur. Minions, Elder One stage cards, and Mythos cards. And a Holy Spawn. Yeah, because Yogg-Sothoth was the one who wanted a child, and there's a lore to it. It almost becomes very, um, not sitcom, what's the other one? Reality-esque. But here. That's just my two cents on the matter. Right, that was my half-blind unboxing of... Cthulhu Death May Die. I completely forgot to say the classic phrase of this is once again just an unboxing, not a value, uh, not a review of the gameplay, but I think from the outset you can see that it was all about the quality of the product and I am beyond chuffed. I've just noticed, I know I should have straight away, but the Kickstarter stretch goals did not require any extra rules, which means that the Elder Gods themselves run on their own rules inside of a universe that has rules within it, i.e. the rules of the main game. I'm dead impressed, beyond dead impressed, but proof's in the pudding of the play. And if this plays as well as it presents itself, then I am going to be playing this for many, many, many years to come. This may even become a game that I play solo, and I rarely play games solo. 
especially ones that are heavy. But anyway, thank you for sticking around on this whirlwind ride of me being unable to undo sellotape. I will catch you next time. Thank you very much. <laughs>